In this video, I'll explain when a seller is exempt from furnishing a transfer disclosure statement to the buyer, otherwise known as an exempt seller. And you may have even seen an exempt seller disclosure. This is a one page document. It's meant for sellers that aren't required to do a TDS. It says that right here, used by sellers who are exempt from completing a TDS or for any seller who doesn't provide an SPQ, otherwise known as a seller property questionnaire. And you know, this form and the SPQ for that matter, they're both made up. These are made up forms, unlike the TDS. The TDS is actually, this is a state required form. If you look in state civil code, you can find the exact template for this form. This is all verbiage taken from right out of the state's civil code. And so sellers in general have to fill this out. This is a requirement by the state that can't be waived. And some sellers are exempt and I'll tell you which ones, because this is a problem that comes up. I'll see an exempt seller disclosure and it'll come up because the seller thinks they're exempt when they're not. And usually the seller might be a flipper or property investor, or maybe own the property as a rental for a long time and didn't occupy it. So they think they're exempt for some ridiculous reason, just usually because they don't want to fill out the TDS. They're nervous. They see this and they think they're going to say something wrong, but you shouldn't be nervous at all with disclosures. So we have the exemplar disclosure. And like I said, this isn't actually required. Now your broker might require it for internal office policy, but it's not legally required. It's just that the California Association created a form for exempt sellers. And they basically are saying, look, you're exempt. You don't have to do a TDS, but disclosing something is better than nothing. So let's just kind of do a shorter version of the TDS. And at least you're, you're putting forth an effort to be transparent. And this reduces the probability of, of you being blamed, you as a seller being blamed by the buyer for withholding or concealing material information. Okay, let me jump over here. I won't read this, this is very boring, but this, I'll just go through it quickly and explain when a seller is actually exempt because most of the time when I see exempt, quote unquote, exempt sellers, they're not actually exempt. So I just wanna, bring your attention to the fact that it can't be waived. It says here, there's even case law that in an as is sale, a buyer can't waive the transfer disclosure statement. And I, I would say the same thing for an NHD, natural hazard disclosure. That's a thing. Sometimes I see buyers or investor buyers and they'll waive stuff. And it's like, no, 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 you can't waive that. It's not up to you. It's this is an obligation between the seller and the state to deliver you, the buyer or consumer, with disclosures, advisories. You're, in, you're being informed as a buyer. <clears throat> now you can throw it in the trash, they can hand you a TDS and you can refuse to read it as a buyer and just throw it away. That's your prerogative, but it doesn't change that there's a legal requirement for a seller to disclose what they know. Okay, now there are exceptions and these exceptions create an exempt seller. Now, most of the time, and I, I, I'll go through this very quickly as to not bore you with just reading this because you could read it yourself if you wanted to, but basically it's going to say when, when the requirement of furnishing a TDS doesn't apply. <clears throat> and most of those are pretty straightforward. Like here we have pursuant to a court order. So if there's a court order that is that is transferring ownership of a property, then the owner of the property doesn't have to use a TDS, a transfer disclosure statement. They're an exempt seller, basically. Same with transfer from a mortgagee to, uh, by mortgagor, maybe someone's surrendering their property to the bank because they can't make payments or doing a, a deed in lieu of foreclosure or something like that. Well, the bank doesn't need to get a TDS from the owner. So they're saying if it's a mortgage matter, there's foreclosure, something like that, there doesn't need to be a TDS. And these are obvious, right? I'll tell you where it's not obvious. And this is where I see the problem. Sales or transfers by a fiduciary in the course of the administration of a trust, guardianship, conservatorship or decedent's estate. And, and here's the most common one. When you're a trustee of a trust, because so many homes are in a trust now, especially a living trust. <clears throat> so this is probably the most important line to, to take away in this video. And it is, this exemption shall not apply to a sale if the trustee is a natural person who is a trustee of a revocable trust and is a former owner of the property. So let me pause right there. If you bought the property, and you later put it in a trust and your property is held in a trust, 
because that's good for estate planning. If you put your property in trust and go to sell it, you're not an exempt seller. This is a common mistake. You are not an exempt seller just because your property is in a trust. Or if you're an uh, or if you were an occupant in possession of the property within the preceding year. Maybe you are just a beneficiary. Maybe you are named in the trust and your parents had the house. You lived with them for a while. Uh, your parents pass away. The home's still in a trust. Now you want to sell it. You are not an exempt seller. You are not an exempt seller. The only time you're an exempt seller is if the home is part of this estate or it's held in a trust and you didn't occupy the property. You did not live in that that property. You were never the owner before it was in the trust. You had never previously owned it and you have not lived in it in the last year. Then you're an exempt seller. Okay. And then I'll go down just and finish off the last few. So some of these are have to do with just a transfer government entity, that sort of thing. Pretty obvious. Those never come up. I never see issues or misunderstandings. It's almost always with people that have their home in a trust or people that own a home within a corporation or LLC or their flippers. And I'll explain that in one second. But it also says sales between from one co-owner to another. If they're just transferring ownership among co-owners, you don't need to do a TDS, you're exempt. Or from one spouse. Or if you're transferring to someone, maybe a, a selling your property to a child or someone in your bloodline, then and blood family, immediate family, you don't have to do one. And of course, in, in a divorce, and that pretty much sums it up. Now, the aside from the trust, the trust issue, which is probably the most common, and I'd say uh, that's a close tie with the other most common reason that people make a mistake as confusing themselves as a an exempt seller is they might own a property in an LLC, which is a common way to hold investment properties, or they might have a corporation that they buy homes to flip or whatever. And these people, they'll buy it with their, comp their, their company or their entity or whatever, and then they'll go to sell it and they'll say, I'm an exempt seller. Give me an ESD, exempt seller disclosure, this form. Well, here's the problem. They're not an exempt seller. They're not required. They're, they're not requ they're, they're, they are required to do a TDS form. Nowhere in the civil code that I just read you that if you own it as a corporation, you're exempt. <clears throat> that's, that's not how it works. And then, and so sometimes when we have to inform clients of this, they'll say, well, I never lived there. I've never even seen it. I live out of state. Okay, fine. That's, that, that's irrelevant. It's not saying it's not, it, so a lesson about disclosures, it's, it's, it's not what you don't know. I mean, there may be a leak in the roof and you don't know about it. And so if it asks, if there's a leak, you put no, you're not lying. You don't know you've never been there. So you just put no disclosures are about disclosing what you know or don't know, but you're, there's no way you can know of anything and everything wrong with a property unless you've seen it. You just get in trouble if you conceal it or misrepresent it. This happens a lot because I mean, of course, we've had two very wet winters here in California, but, but, <clears throat> you know, prior to that, there'd be a leak in the first rain. It would go six months without raining. Then it would pour one weekend. And then the buyer would say, the seller lied to me. The seller lied to me and didn't tell me there's a roof leak. And now I have a, a roof leak. Well, how is the seller supposed to know unless the roof was leaking? That's not how a seller gets in trouble. A seller gets in trouble is if they had a, a leak, they, they, the house got flooded. There's a record of them having damage from a flood, but the seller didn't tell the buyer that. That's how you get in trouble. It's when you misrepresent, withhold, and conceal material information. If you have a seller that's, that owns a property and they're, let's say they're, let me, let me give you an extreme example. It's, it's, it's an out-of-state company that bought the property and now they're flipping it and you pa pass this off to the authorized signatory and, the, and that person says, aren't I exempt? I can't fill this out. I don't know. I haven't even seen it. Well, you fill it out to the best of your knowledge. If you don't know, the answer is no. If, you, if, the, if what you see is a yes, you write yes. It's that simple. Don't overthink it, but you're not an exempt seller. Usually the only exempt sellers I see are people that inherited a home that they never lived in and never owned before. That's probably the most common, truly exempt seller. Exempt, exempt sellers are actually quite rare, to be honest. So if you have any questions, leave a comment. I hope this helps with this whole, with, with sorting out some of the ambiguity of this whole exempt seller topic. But I do see this come up periodically. So I thought I'd make a video about it.
Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment.